Good morning, good morning, good morning, people of God. Hallelujah. Father is so amazing. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for everybody. Come on in, saints and friends of the Most High God. I have something I need to share with you on this beautiful Wednesday morning. I have a prophetic word that God has given me. I was typing to wrap up this word I got this morning to share with the people of God. Amen. Because he loves us so very much. Oh my God. The king loves you so much. So thank God for you coming on in. And because we're going to, I want to share this word because Father God has so much for us. Good morning. And this is going to be an encourager to you. And it's going to, oh, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you're going to be okay. Hallelujah. As I share what Father has given me. Uh, good morning. Now, uh, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes because it's a, it's, it's a good word and it's a word that's going to encourage your heart. It's a word that's going to say, oh, so you might get a little ouch, you might get a little everything else, but you're going to be okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> let me go by. Let's start in Colossians. Colossians 2 and 15. And in Colossians 2 and 15, it says, I have, I, he has spoiled principalities. That's what it says. Having spoiled principalities. This is Paul talking. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them. And so, Father God lets us know that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and he was triumphant over them. And so this word, Father God's talking about the adversary. Good morning. And this word, he's talking about the adversary. And he's talking about how the adversary is an influencer on God's people. He's an influencer, period, in the world. We know that. And so, uh, the term influence is not just something that they pulled out the air, okay? Uh, have, get your spirit mind, spirit man ready to receive. Because it's not something that they just pulled out of the air all of a sudden. Everything is always designed. Remember that, people of the Most High God. And remember that it comes from the adversary, the things that the enemy does to make, you know, you looking at stuff like, well, how did that happen? We're going to go deeper into this, Amen. So Colossians 2 and 15 says, Jesus having, Paul's talking, and having small principalities and powers, he made a, a show of them openly. You go, Jesus. He triumphed over the adversary. And of course, you know, the devil mad. Amen. You know, he's mad. So let me share this word that God gave me. And he said, the adversary is, he's now influencing. All right. He is a defeated foe, but he is influencing. He is the one that keeps people doubting and not believing. He says that Father's going to come through and do it. He is the one that produces and promotes doubt. Good morning. This is the work the Lord gave me this morning. He is the one that produces and promotes doubt. He is the one that gets in the ear and tells you, Father, is not going to do it. He is the influencer. He's talking about Satan. He's letting us know that he's the one that's doing the influencing. He's the one. And he says he is the one that keeps people from speaking his word. Because he knows the word is what destroys the yoke. And he gives me Psalms 107. He sent his word. It says, and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That's, an, that's the King James Version, okay? He says, Satan knows the word will destroy the yoke. He is the one that tries to tie the people's hands. Oh, come on. Come on. He says, it is the heart of man that is the problem. Satan is influencing the heart of man. He is influencing what's inside the spirit of sin and lust. 
He said, Father has sent his word and he's healed. Once again, he gave me Psalms 107 and 20. But the mind, he said, the mind of man, that's why they have to be renewed in their minds. Because the heart is the problem. We know Romans 12 talks about being renewed in your mind. So he says, the heart is the problem. He said, people of God, the enemy, the people of God, the enemy try to keep you from speaking truth. Oh, man. Hallelujah. He said, what you know is truth. He will try to silence your mouth so you will not speak your deliverance. Oh, my God. The enemy wants to keep you where you will not open up your mouth and speak. Oh, my, 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 my. He says, people are already delivered, but they won't speak their own deliverance. The enemy wants to block people. He said, but I've already sent my word. I've already done the work. It is finished. John 19 and 30. As he's in John 19 and 30, that latter part of it says, he said, talking about Jesus, it is finished. Hallelujah. He said, but nobody is speaking his finished work like they should speak it. It is finished. Oh my God, my God, my God. Oh, people of God. Tag. Do whatever you can so somebody can hear this word this morning. Father went on to tell me, he said, the power lies in the tongue. He says, the power lies in the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18 and 21. And when he said the power lies in the tongue, there are... Synonyms, rest, recline. So the power rests and reclines in your tongue. Oh, come on up in here. And he said, the adversary. He said, Jesus told me, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. That's John 16 and 33. I have overcome the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. He said, I've done it. I have overcome for you. He said, that is why you can, you can be an overcomer because I have overcome it for you. Yes, things come up, situations come up, but I have overcome them for you. He said the deep things. He said, if you understand the power of the lies in, in, in you, in the tongue, in the tongue, in the tongue. If you understand the power of the lies in the tongue. He told me to tell you, say what you hear Father say. He said, repeat what I say. Repeat, he said it many times. Repeat what I say. Repeat what I say. What holds my people back is what they see. What holds my people back from speaking is what they see. What they see because they will not look beyond what they see. Ah. Oh. He said, that is why they will not speak. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. He says, that is why they will not, seek, will not speak. Because they are looking at what they see. Instead of the unseen thing. Good morning. He said, so the enemy can influence them based on what they see. He said the enemy promotes fear. He promotes doubt. He promotes hesitation of them moving. My God, my God. He says because they are seeing the seen instead of the unseen. They're focused on the seen. I keep saying stop looking at the seen and walk in the unseen. You are defeated. He said you are not defeated. You are, vict you are, victory. You are victorious. He says there is no lack when I say there is no lack. There is no lack, but there is a lack of wisdom. And he gives James 1 and 5, if any man lack wisdom, ask God. 
So Father God is telling us in this whole thing, I don't have to explain the word, the word is self-explanatory for itself, but he's letting us know we've got to get beyond what we're looking at. That's why he has me stressing it many times in my teaching. We got to get beyond what we're looking at because what we're looking at is being influenced by the adversary to get you distracted so that you won't tap into the unseen. Oh, come on up in here. Oh, my God. He goes on to say, the enemy does not want father's people to see the big things of God. He told me, he said, I'm bigger than anything. He said, people are limited based on their thinking. The mind, what they think, makes them limited. They're limited on what they think if they set their affections on me, the things above, not on the things that they see. I am limitless. He's constantly talking about it. He said, I'm trying to teach my people how to get and the areas that get beyond the areas that they see. Mm. He says, I'm trying to teach my people how to get to that area where they see me bigger. Get to that area where they see me bigger. Stop seeing me right there where you are in the small thinking. That's what he said. I'm not there. I'm exceeding. I'm abundantly. I'm above all that you could ever ask or think. That is me. And then he says, and I am beyond all of that. Oh, this blessed my soul this morning. He told me to tell you, he said, I am the pre-existing one. I was here before anything else was. He said, now who are you going to believe, Satan or me? Who are you going to believe, him or me? Someone he says, him or me. Then he says, someone, talking about Satan, who is jealous of my glory. Someone who's jealous of me. Who, you're go who are you going to believe? He's jealous of my glory. He's jealous of my power. That is why he wants to be like me, but could not be. <laughs> Father said, nobody is greater than me. And he told me, he said, daughter, he says, that's why I sit back and I laugh. He's so amazing. Now, this is something Father said. He says, it is a shame my people don't know my power. It is a shame, it is a shame my people don't know my power. He said, fear keeps them from recognizing. Fear holds them back. And what does the enemy do? He uses fear to make my people not pay their tithes, not trust me, make me, I'm making my people not speak my word, making my people doubt. He said it's fear because they don't see me big. Wow. See, I'm pausing right here. See, the adversary, if he can get you to look at things and see them Bigger than your father? When the enemy can get you to home in on, on something like a magnifying glass, he's blowing it up, blowing it up, blowing it up, and you can't see your king bigger? He's influencing you to look at the thing, not the one who's bigger than the thing. Oh my God, my God, my God. And when that happens, you, we, people of God, we end up sh pulling back, doubting what King says, listening to the influencer, which is the adversary. Like I said, these folk didn't just get this name out of the, picked it out of the sky. <laughs> Not. You got to be aware of what's going on around you. So the adversary is using things. He's using fear. What if he don't do it? Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to jump ahead over the word, but let me go there. Oh, my God. He said, because they don't see me big. The next thing he said is, now, that is why they won't. He says, now, that is why they want to be like the world. 
He's talking about his people. He said, now, that is why they want to be like the world. Because their eyes are on what the world has. And they're missing out on the importance of what I have. Eternal life for them. But they're seeing only the temporary. And they are going to miss out on the eternal. It is more to me. He said, it is more... To me, then riches. This is what Father says. There's more to him than just riches, you guys. Come on. He said the people, the people are looking for the riches and they're not understanding the rich things of God. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. Come on. Come on. He said, they're looking at me in so many different ways. He said, you have to look at the eternal. And Mark 8 and 36 says, for what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? He said, they're mad. He's talking about these people. He said, they're mad. They're upset. And he, this is what he said they're saying. I thought he was going to give me this. He was going to give me that. He said, they don't want to be rich in their souls first. He said, I have people walking around looking for millionaire status. He gives me John 3 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. He said, your soul being fat, your soul prospering, that's what I want to see. He said the prosperity of their souls, but they want millionaire status. He said he was going to make, he said people are saying he was going to make me rich. He said, then they're going about, he said, but father says, but how is your soul? How is your soul? A soul that is made fat recognizes, this is what the king says, the eternal. He said this, talking about the other things, all these other things shall be added. He said this is just an addition to, come on up in here. Father's letting us know when our soul is fat, everything else is an addition to. But if you... As the old folks said, if you have the cart before the horse, I'm getting back to the word in a minute. But if you have the cart before the horse, you are missing out on what king has for you. And this is how the influencer, Satan himself, can keep people from getting to what father has, which is tapping into him, speaking his word, Accessing his word, recognizing that you're making your soul fat because all these other things are going to come automatically because you are kingdom driven, people of God. You're kingdom driven. Wow. But if you don't recognize this, then you miss out on what King is saying. I'm going back to the word. He went on to tell me, he said, the soul that is made fat recognizes the eternal. A soul that is made fat also recognizes if I don't have millionaire status, I have eternity. Mm. Now somebody preached that one, okay? Luke 16 and 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Okay? Now he said that, and he started talking about the tithe, you guys. Okay? Hello. So, to the person who's seeking this status, to the per person who's after all these other things, if king can't trust you with the little, if you're not a good steward of what he's giving you, and then if not only that, if you're not, Father wants you to be fat in your soul. I'd rather have my father looking at me and say, ooh, I'm big. She big. She blowing. So we love the terminology out there in the world back then. I don't know if there's still that today. Oh, she blowing up. Oh, he blowing up. Father wants you to be fat in your spirit, man. He wants that soul to be so full of him. 
where you are so full of king you don't even recognize. Oh, I'm dealing with, I got a little something, something going on. I got a situation. I don't recognize it because why? My affections are on things that are above. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the one who's big. I'm not looking at the influencer. I'm looking at the one who's bigger. And that's our king. That is our king. He told me, going on to what he said about tithes, he said, my people wrestle with that one thing. He said, it's very small. It's a very small thing. A very small thing. Do not hold back from me. That's what he said. He said, you tie my hands and I cannot rebuke the devourer for your sake. Malachi 3.11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord. Wow. He can't do it. If you were not giving him his ten, we tie his hand. You need to make that a, a, I mean, a meme for yourself. If I don't give him ten, I tie his hand. And, and, and see, people want you to debate about this, but instead of, oh, I got to go, keep, father say stop, keep, go, I got to go, moving on. He say, go on, go on. He say, you tie my hands. He say, you hold back on me. You hold back on me. They say, I, I love you, God. I love you, God. And he told me, he said, they do love me, but you disobey me. He said, in this one thing, have you robbed me with your tithes and offerings? And Father said, but they quote the scripture, Proverbs 13 and 22. He's talking about his people. He said, but they quote the scripture, Proverbs 13 and 22. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. He said, that's what his people do. But Father said, but they robbed me. He told me to say, he says, he has so many avenues to bring wealth. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to bring, he doesn't have to bring wealth just from the wicked. He said, I have so many avenues. But when you're not seeking, when you're not seeking my face, when you're robbing me and you think I'm overlooking it, I'm seeing your heart. Man. He said, I'm seeing your heart. He said, when they hold back from me, it means that they don't trust me. They don't trust me. Because if you can't let go of the mammon, you don't trust me. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Wow. Wow. Father God. He loves his people so much, you guys. And all our Heavenly Father wants us to do is stop being influenced by the influence of Satan himself and obey him. Stay in his word. Activate the word in your life. <laughs> all right now. Come on. Activate the word in your life. And when you activate the, the word in your life, you will see him do it for you. And I hear you, Father. He says he sees the cries and the tears of his people. But I, he, he's telling me to go back. He sees the cries and tears of his people. But trust is the factor. We must trust the Lord. We must rely on him. We must know that he has us. And we got to repeat what he says. We've got to say what he says. We got to speak his word. So when you're in that state of mind, see the enemy's job is to keep you in that state of mind that, oh, fear, fear. What if it, what if it don't happen? Oh, what if it don't? What if it don't? He's got you. The enemy has the people so caught up in that thing. Come on, praise God. He has you caught. Oh God, oh God, oh God. 
But when you recognize that he is big and bigger, he's bigger than what the influence of Satan is saying to you. He's bigger than the picture he's trying to paint. Oh, come on, King. He is marring what the enemy is marring what you see. He's saying, that's not going to happen. Here you are rejoicing. Oh, God, it's going to do this. Oh, it's going to do that. And then the enemy comes in and tries to bring fear because some news may have come your way. Something bad may have come your way. Something something may have came and just tried to distract you or distort you, your view of the blessing. That's the enemy's job to keep you off focus. So you won't receive and recognize Father God is doing his biggest work in your life. Oh, yes. Come on. He does not want you to know this because if you know it, then what you'll start doing, you'll start walking away from his influence and go to what you know is and speaking the word that what God say. That's what he said. What did I say? What did I say? Repeat what I said. That's what Father God said. Repeat what I say. Repeat what I say. Stop repeating what the devil says. You know, he said, it's this. You don't yet you don't start saying, but you start acting. Your behavior starts demonstrating what the influencer is telling you. Stay at home, girl. You know, you're you, you too tired to go. You can't go right now. Stay at home. You don't need to go to church. And you need a word. Father God is speaking to you. You need a word. Go, go, go eat. Go eat. It's time to eat. Go eat. Oh, no, I'm staying home. And then you get a phone call. Somebody calling. And, and then you're, you're eating because you start digesting their negativity. You start hearing and speaking and out of your mouth. Oh, 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 oh. What life is going to flow? From the heart, the mouth speaks. And how the heart flows to issues of life. So you got to recognize what comes in you. That's why Father said, you speak what I say. Why? Because when you, when you have his word in you, he, he, I'm going back to it. He is the one that keeps people from speaking Father God's word. Satan is the one. He's, he says, because he knows the word is what destroys the yoke. What has you yoked up? What has you bound up? Satan does not want you to have the word because it, the word will destroy that thing. He will block, yes, he will block, he will destroy that thing that the enemy is trying to use against you. But if you are not being filled with the word of God, if you're not eating the word of God, The enemy will use anything, any tactic to get you from the word. Man, that's why he sent his word to bring us healing and deliverance and breakthrough and everything. But if you're not eating the word, Satan don't care anything about you. His aim, his goal is to keep you from looking at the one who's bigger. That's why Father said the enemy's jealous of him. That's why he want. Remember, he said, in the, and I think it was in the Old Testament, "I will ascend to the heavens to be like the Most High." Satan wants to be like God, so ooh we. So if he can get you not to receive from God, then that means you're receiving from him, and he wants to be your God. That small G in your life. So he will bring things, little small things, and you'll gravitate to the small things. I hear my king talking to me. You'll gravitate to the small things. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4, I don't have my Bible in front of me, but I do have the word inside of me. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, it talks about when the children of Israel fought the Philistines and, and the Philistines beat them. Even though the Philistines had uh, sent for the Ark of the Covenant. And so when the Philistines saw that the children of Israel had the Ark of the Covenant, they were all 
and an uproar. The children of Israel were just ooh, making a lot of noise. And so the Philistines were saying, what is that noise in the Israelite camp? And one of the, one of the people said, the ark of God, the ark of the covenant is in the camp. And immediately the children, the, the Philistines got worked up and upset and said, oh my God, oh, uh, we, oh, it's, it's some terrible, it's going to happen, oh my God. We, and, he, and, the, and the leaders began to tell them and the military army began to say, you got to fight like you never fought before. This the Ark of the Covenant. We don't want to be like, be like the, uh, what happened with the uh, Egyptians. You, you got to fight like you never fought before. Long story short, they went out to fight. And the children of Israel had the Ark of the Covenant right there with them. The Ark represented, you know, the, it represented God, okay? So here they had this Ark. And, but lo and behold, the Bible says that the children of Israel were defeated. I think it was like 4,000 of them were defeated, died, but they had the Ark of the Covenant. So now the Ark of the Covenant has been captured by the Philistines, and it's going into their camp, it's going back to their land, and the children of Israel crying and saying, what happened? How, what happened? And we have Eli, remember Eli, I talked about him last week. Eli is sitting at the gate on the outside, and Eli's like, what's, what's the news? He's been waiting to hear what's going on in the battle. What's the news? And this man, young man, comes running around and said, hey. He said, what happened? Because the young man, is, he has torn his clothes. He's put on ashes all over his body. And he's like, what's going on? He's in mourning. Why? Because they were defeated. I'm getting to my point in a minute. Y'all just hold what you're working with. Because they were defeated. But wait a minute. We had God in the camp. We had the ark in the camp. And reading my notes from the New Living Translation Bible, the open Bible, the notes in there, it was said in those notes that they treated the ark, the children of Israel began to treat the ark of the covenant like it was some magical thing. And they thought Father was going to perform for them. Oh, come on up and hear you. I better get this right now. Uh, so they thought Father was going to perform for them and give them a victory. Father demonstrated to them, you can't use me like, oh, I'm going to pull him up when I want to. Oh, he's going to perform for me when I want to. King is bigger, baby. King is bigger. You better get this this morning. He's bigger. And so what did Father God do? Because, again, the Ark of the Covenant symbolized his power, his glory. Come on. It symbolized, it symbolized his glory. So what did he do? What did he do? He said, okay, y'all won't try to use me like that. They lost the battle. But check this out. Oh, I love this. Keep reading. When you get into chapter 4 and you go, go into chapter 5 and go into chapter 6. So now let's go into these chapters 4, 5, and 6. Just follow along with me. I told you I don't have my Bible in front of me, but I got the word in me. Okay? So in these chapters, so let's go to chapter 5. So here we have the Philistines. They're so excited. Oh, we done defeated them. Oh, we're so happy. We saw this, this, this. And what do they do? They put the Ark of the Covenant in their temple where their God, Dagon, is. And so they go into the temple of their temple. And the people go in and they find that their God, Dagon, the statue, is face down before the Ark of the Covenant. You go, Jesus. Come on, Father God. Come on, do you. Do you. Hello, he's bigger, baby. I'm trying to paint the picture for you. He's bigger. He's bigger. Immediately, the scripture jumps in my spirit that says, I will have no other gods before me. So every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. You better come on up in here. Why? Because he is God. So here it is, the Ark of the Covenant. And here this, this false God, day God, Father God, the power of God just knocks him right there before him. And the Bible says, the people go back and they raise, pick up the statue and put him back up. Okay. 
But to go in again the next day, and this time, Dagon, he's back down, head cut off, hands cut off. That means what? Defeated. Defeated. If you understand, people of God, the adversary has already been defeated. I got to go back up here in the Colossians 2 and 15. And having small principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Jesus Christ has already small principalities and powers, baby. He made a show, just like Father God, the Ark of the Covenant, just like Dagon was laying before the Ark of the Covenant, hand cut off, heads cut off, both hands. He made a show. So Father God is telling you, look, you got to stop looking at this joker, this influencer, this thing, this person, this deity, brother. This adversary that is not even worthy of your attention. And keep your eyes on me. And remember, he wants to be like me. He's not me. There's no other God before me. Father God said, I was before and I'll be only one after. Uh-uh. And nothing coming in between. Hello. You got to get your minds on the king. Oh, my God. This prophetic word that God gave me. The adversary, he's now the influencer. He is defeated. He's a defeated foe, but he is influencing. He is the one that keeps people doubting and not believing that Father's going to come through and do it. He's the one that produces and promotes doubt. That's what Father God is saying to you. Remember what Jesus told Peter when Peter said, if that be you, Lord, bid me to come, bid me to come. And Father God, I mean, Jesus said to Peter, come. He saw Jesus walking on the water. He said, come. And he's just walking on the water. And water rose up and got him off focus, baby. What's rising up in your life and getting you off focus? Because Jesus asked Peter, why did you doubt? Why? Because look, the water influenced Peter. The waves influenced Peter. He didn't keep his eyes on the one that said, I am he. I'm the one that told you to come to me. Mm -mm -mm. I'm the one that said, come. You asked me. I said, come on. I told you it's okay to come. Why? Because I'm telling you, I got you. When you walk in like I'm telling you to walk, you don't have to worry about falling because I got you. You don't have to worry about sinking because I got you. What makes you fall and sink is your doubt. Because he who, the influencer is producing and promoting the doubt that's trying to come to you. Oh my God. Oh my God. He is the one that he gets in the ear and tells your father's not going to do it. And he is the influencer. He's the one that keeps people from speaking father's word. Because he knows the word is what destroys that yoke that's trying to operate in your life, baby. That yoke of doubt and unbelief. That yoke of why, when, how, all of that. And Father God knew the why, when, how was going to come up. Mm -mm. Oh, got to go down. He's sending me all over this word he's given me. Because he wants you to be encouraged this morning. Let me go back to it. He said, I'm going back to what the adversity. He said, Jesus said, yes, I've overcome the world. John 6 and 33. I've done it. I've overcome it for you. He said, that is why you can be an overcomer. Because I have overcome it for you. He said, yes, situations come up. Yes, situations come up. But I have overcome them for you. So you don't have to worry about the why and the when and oh, I don't understand. He said the deep things. 
deep call it to deep baby he said, if you can understand the power that lies in you, in the tongue, in the tongue, in the tongue. So while we beg and plead and, oh God, we know God. God says, it's in your tongue. Oh, 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 he's, he got me all over the place. That's why I kept some things up on my, on my computer. I want to show you something. Mm -mm -mm. Proverbs 11 and 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Okay. But I want to go to this in Proverbs 10, verse 20, 20, 21, and 31. The tongue of the of the just is as choice silver. Come on. Man, man, man. Proverbs 21 and 23. He who guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from distress. Hello, make a note of that. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from distress. So you got to be careful what's coming off that tongue. Speak life. I was talking to someone recently and I was telling them, you have to keep a praise on your lips. You've got to keep a praise. Keep a praise. Keep a praise. All this week, I've just been in pray. I've just been praising God, praising God, praising God. I'm praising him because he's worthy. I'm praising him because, see, when you get a revelation of who God is through Jesus, when you get a revelation of who your God is, when you understand that he is bigger than this joker that's trying to be the influence of your life, you can recognize that no matter what try to come my way, he's bigger. And I won't fear what he tries to bring to me. I won't get off focus when something tries to come my way because I'm looking at the one who's bigger. And I have the power in my own tongue to speak life or speak death to that thing. But if we're not mindful of this fact, if we're not mindful of this fact, then we will get off focus. We'll get in a state of worry. And we don't, and then we won't trust the timing of Father. The devil's crazy, y'all. I told y'all many times of that. He will try to make you rush something. And if God's saying, wait, just hold it, wait, 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 just wait. And you can jump ahead of God. You can move ahead of God. Come on, talk to me, King. All right, going back to Samuel again. In the book of Samuel, I think we're moving to the, it might be 2 Samuel now. But anyway, it might be still in 1 Samuel. But in Samuel, in the book of Samuel, here we have King uh, Saul. Now, Samuel told Saul, look, I'm going to come and I'm going to give the sacrifice. I'll be there, okay? King Saul is getting antsy. He just, he can't wait. He's looking at people. He's being influenced by people. I hope you caught that one right there. He's being influenced by people so he can't wait because he's too much, he's too busy being influenced by people. Hallelujah. So here we have Samuel. Say, I'm going to come. I'm coming. So here Samuel is. And he said, what, you, what have you done? I told you I was coming to make the sacrifice. Why? Because you out of order. You're not supposed to be making the sacrifice. I'm the one that was supposed to be making the sacrifice. What did King Saul say to Samuel? Well, the people, once again, you let people mess with you. Stop letting people mess with you. Stop letting being influenced by what people think and or say. Did God say it? Did Father speak it? Now, it's different if Father gave you a word. But even in that, you got to trust his timing. But stop being influenced by 
people. That's he, oh, I gotta go back. He said, go up there, girl. He said me, I hear him say, go up there, go up there. He's telling me to go back up to this word here. Okay, so look at this. He's telling me, he said, his people, his people, they're so focused on millionaire status. He told me I was gonna be a millionaire. I'm gonna be a million. Let me go back to it. I'm gonna read it. He said, I have people walking around looking for millionaire status. And he's giving me 3 John 2 where it says, he said, but this is what he said. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Your soul being fat, your soul prospering, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. He said the prosperity of their soul, but they want millionaire status. See, when you can't see you already rich already, baby. When you can't recognize that you are rich already, you're missing out. He said he's going, and then they start saying, God said he's going to get make me rich. He's going to make me rich. But if I don't want to know, how's your soul? How's your soul? While you're chasing after millionaire status, you better be concerned. Hey, let me check my soul. I'm a, I'm a good. Is my soul okay? I'm an align with an alignment with the king. He said because the soul that is fat recognizes the eternal. All this other stuff is just an addition to. Oh wow. Oh wow. Talk father. So if you do get millionaire status, you get millionaire status, you're looking at, okay, my soul was fat first. My mind was on the eternal first. This that you see is just in addition to. But if, again, if you put in the cart before the horse, chasing after those things, chasing after what the world is doing, then you're missing out. On what King has for you. You're missing out on seeing him as big. When your eyes are not on Jesus. When your eyes is not on, uh, not on the kingdom. Then you will be like Peter. You will sink. Because you're looking at the wrong things. Hello. Just saying. You will sink. Looking at the wrong thing. And you won't be at, at the point where you can truly say, you know what, Father? I'm not going to hold back from you. I'm not going to hold back my tithes. I'm not going to hold back my offering. I'm not, Father, you know what? I'm not going to even get in a debate about it. If you say, give you 10%, here you go. And you say, and I want an offering, here you go. He gave this to me. Yeah, I didn't just pull this out of, oh, I think I'll talk to the people about this today. I'm sitting there in prayer. He, he, here's my recording. Here's my recording. He gives me prophetic word and it's recorded right here. He gives me this to share with his people. Because he does not want you to be walking lacking. But when you are seeking, when you are not seeking his face, when you're not seeking his face, you're robbing him. He said, let me tell you something about Father. He knows you love him. So the love is not a debate. But Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what? There's a keep in there. There's a keep somewhere in there. If you love me, Jesus said, you will keep. My commandments. Father God says, I don't doubt that you love me, that you don't love me. You, I know you love me, but you, you're disobeying me. Mm -mm -mm. Man. Wow. Father, is he's saying this for a reason. See, because let me tell y'all something. Some some stuff is about to hit the fan, and then some blessings about to come in behind the fan being hit. Y'all better hear this woman of God. So when you give them half-hearted obedience, it's disobedience. 
When you're giving him less than what you know. I heard a preacher say one time, don't give God a tip, give him a tithe. Hello? When you're giving him what is his, when you, see your, let me tell you about love. Your love for him makes you glad to do. Your love for him doesn't look at that 10%. And say, well, you know what? I would right now, but I got so much going on. I, I, I can't, I can't afford to do that right now. Your love for him says it's not about the money; it's about the obedience, Father. You ask me for something. See, that's that's why. Come on, talk to me, King. See, that's why people who tell me I'm gonna be a millionaire, a millionaire, but you won't give him even ten percent of your hundred air. How you gonna be a millionaire? How? When you struggle with the hundred. Oh, go back up there, girl. Come on, go back up. Let me go back to this word. Jesus. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see if I can't find that. Oh, Lord, I love him. See, Father's helping. He's helping. He's helping. But we got to let him help us. He's helping. Man, he's helping. Come on, Jesus. Let me find it. I want to find it again. Wow. Luke 16 and 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Millionaire. Hundredaire. How can you expect to get that when you struggle with this little? Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Hello. See, Abba looks at everything, y'all. He's bigger. Nothing escapes him. He, that's why he said, my people wrestle with that one thing. And he said, it's a very small thing. And, and he repeated, a very small thing. What's the small thing? The holding back what belongs to him. But you want the big. He said, why would I give you, in other words, let me paraphrase it. Why would I give you something big? When I can't even trust you with the very little. Because if you get the big, you're still going to be dishonest with the, with the big too. Hello. It's in the book. It's noted. So our hearts have got to be on point. Stop listening to that joke about everything. He makes, Father makes all grace abound towards you. You're going to be okay. If father, when Father says it's going to be okay, you're supposed to sit back and recline. <laughs> it's okay. You're supposed to be reclining. Oh, let me go. Let me go. Let me go here. I got to go back. Father just, he has me all over in this word. He really does. Oh, I love him so much. Look at this. Power lies in the tongue. The power lies in the tongue. The power rest reclines in the tongue. Prophetess, I hear what you're saying. And prophetess, I've been speaking. I have been speaking. I have been decreeing. I have been declaring. Now trust this timing. See, the queen declaring, yeah, we're doing all those things. Matthew 18th chapter, 18th of the 19th verse. If anybody comes together, harmonizes together, make a symphony together. That's what it says in the Amplified Together. His father says it, it says it in the book. It shall be done. It shall be done. 
as we come in an agreement. We're harmonizing, making a symphony together. We're agreeing and we're speaking and we're decreeing. It's already done. According to Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 18th and the 19th verse, it's already done. So what has to happen? What messes the people of God up is timing. Timing is what messes up the people of God. Timing makes you walk away from something you've been believing for for years and it's about to show up. And you get so frustrated and the, the influencer keeps talking to you and talking to you to get you to walk away. Timing is what makes a person who's been in the house of God for umpteen years walk away over a small thing. You better watch that joker. Hello. But you got to be so determined. None of these things shall move me. I'm trusting my father. You said it's done. Father, you said you're bigger. You said this joker lying to me. Because he's trying to be like you. And he's not you. I'm going to stop listening to him. He's not going to promote doubt and unbelief in my heart. I know in whom I believe. That's what one apostle said. I know in whom I believe. So you got to keep believing on the one that you believe in. I got to keep believing that my father God says, I will do it. I got to keep believing Isaiah 55 and 11. He always keeps his promises. It shall come to pass. I got to keep believing it. So what if I'm at, it's almost a minute till the blessing. And the devil trying to make me keep doubting and doubting. Because something has tried to come in my life to interrupt the minute till. I got to still keep on believing. So what? It looks like you lose it. You are not losing. You never lose. Pastor Price. We never lose. So what? And you're pinching some penis right now. But your tongue has to keep speaking. Your tongue has to keep saying, Life is in here. Life is in here. Life is in here. Life is in my house. Blessings are overtaking me. I'm being consumed by blessings. I'm what? And I'm aligning myself with it. Father, I'm putting you back in remembrance now. You told me, according to Malachi 3.11, that you were going to rebuke the devourer for my sake. You, not only that, you told me in Malachi 3.10, hey, you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out. Jesus, you told me if I'm willing and obedient, hallelujah. The word, I'm talking about the word of God when I say Jesus. Uh, the word says, if I'm willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land. Jesus, you told me if I keep your commandments, you told me if I love you, I will keep your commandments. And I love you and I've been keeping your commandments. Now show me what you're working with, King, according to 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Because she said in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, your eyes, Father God, go through to and fro, looking, to, looking for those whose hearts are turned toward you, that you may show yourself strong. That you may show me what you're working with. You're seeking those whose hearts are turned toward you, that you may show yourself strong. That's what you told me now. And the Amplified says he's looking for those hearts that are truly his. One translation says, I think it's the Amplified. My heart is yours. Oh, somebody needs to say that. My heart is yours, God. My heart is yours. Now, thank you, King. I'm about to let you guys go. My heart is yours. My heart is yours, God. You may be Crying tears on top of tears, on top of tears, on top of tears, on top of some more tears. 
But my heart is yours, God. My heart is yours. I'm not doubting. I know you're going to show me what you're working with. My heart is yours. I am going to keep trusting you. I am not going to let this wave of issues and trouble and things and, and my bills, none of these things are going to move me from you. My heart is yours. I'm not going to be moved by the winds that are coming my way. I'm going to keep my eyes on you, Jesus. My heart is yours. Mm-mm-mm. He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. Oh, wait. You got to hold on to this with all that you have. I never lose. You are bigger. There is no limit to you. You are limitless. You do exceeding. You do abundant. You do above all that I could ever ask or think. And you are beyond that. That's what he told us. And I am beyond all of that. He is beyond all of that. He is the pre-existing one. That's what he said. Now back in Samuel, going back to Samuel. When those Philistines recognize God don't play. I love it. He doesn't play. God don't play. Y'all done brought me to a strange place over here. Okay, let me, okay. You think you're going to hold me? And say, oh, look who we have. We, we've got the ark of God. The Bible says, Father God started messing with their bodies. Tumors started growing out. Affecting the men. They wanted, wait a minute, what's going on? Then they Check this out. Read the book. Then they moved the Ark of the Covenant from one location to the next location to the next location inside the Philistine areas. One location to one location. Everybody was affected. Everybody was affected. So what did they do? They said, no. They called, the Bible said, they called for their, their sorcerers, their witches, their, their, their leaders to see what do we need to do to get this away from us. And they said, send that thing away. But before you do, you got to give them an offering. Oh, come on. He said, put an offering in there. Let's get an offering together. Come on, let's get an offering together. What was the offering? The offering was gold tumors. Gold rest. Why? Because that's what was affecting them. Hello, coming up in here. Hello. That's what was affecting them. And they put the Ark of the Covenant in the cart. They put the offering to, with it. They took two cows that had just had calves. And they separated the calves from their parent, from the mother. And they yoked those two cows up and they said, now if they don't go to, I can pronounce that word, Beth somebody. If they don't go that direction, we, we'll just know, okay, this was just a fluke. This is just something that just happened. Because if they, if those cows go a different direction, we'll know. No, that wasn't, that wasn't the Ark of the Covenant. That wasn't their God. It was just a fluke. But the Bible says, those cows went straight for the area of Beth whatever. Straight there. And when the people of God saw it. The children. They saw it. The Bible says they took them two cows. And they made sacrifices. And another reason. The part that I read about this was this. Those two cows. Were had to be willing. Ooh, come on Jesus. Talk to me. See those two cows had to be willing to go. 
Why? Because they just had calves. And based on what I read, they don't leave their little ones. They don't, those young calves, no. They would go back to their calves. But the Bible says they went ahead and were willing. They were going to be a sacrifice. See, how willing are you? How willing are you to follow? How willing are you to be obedient? These two cows were willing to move. They had the ark with them. The ark of the covenant. How willing are you to obey? How willing are you to follow the one who's bigger? How willing are you to stop listening to the influence of Satan himself and start staying in tune with the one who's bigger? How, when are you going to stop listening to somebody that want to be like the Most High and start listening to the Most High? Hello? When? See, we got to be willing. How willing are you? Father, whatever you want from me, here I am. And look, look you go, King. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you got to be, there's, see, there's nothing that I was holding back from you. You know who's got the problem? Your tongue. Mm, hello. You know what the issue is? What you're speaking? See, and some things are not the devil. Some things are you. Sometimes you're trapped in your own mind. That's why I just read, you got to be renewed. The Bible, Father God was talking about renewing that mind. That mind has got to be renewed. Because sometimes you're just trapped in your own thinking. Oh, we. Here my daughter is. I, I want to paint this picture. I know, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm looking at the time. My daughter was very young. Very young. She might have been three. And we'd say, go to, go to sleep tomorrow. Go, go lay down. And I'd go in the room and check on her and open the door. She's sitting up in the bed. I'm like, why? why do go to bed tomorrow. Why are you sitting up? I can't stop thinking. You three. I think she was three at the time. What you thinking about at three? All the enemy wants you to do is get trapped in your own mind. In your own mind. In your own mind. In your own mind. And what is the thing that's in your mind? I, is he going to do it? Is he really going to do it? I'm about to be put out. I'm about to lose. I'm about to this. In your own mind. But you got to get, get into 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. And you've got to cast down that imagination. That thing that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. You got to bring your thoughts under subjection, under the obedience of Jesus Christ. You got to bring your thoughts down and say, look, Lord, I'm casting down this reasoning because all I'm doing is trying to reason in my thoughts. And let me tell you how to help yourself. Turn on some praise and worship music. Get your Bible on. You might not read it. Or either turn on the word of God and let the word play for a little bit. Go to sleep with the word in your spirit. And you'll wake up with a whole new view. But if you go to bed with, I done watched on TV. I done heard none of this. Last night, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I went and got on my treadmill outside. And I said, I'm not playing any music. I'm not, I just want silence while I walk. I was just, everything was silent. Even my, there was no, nothing going through my mind. Just silence. Amen. Sometimes you got to get still. Get still. And because I didn't, I wasn't in my office doing and doing and doing different things. When I went to bed, <coughs> excuse me, that night. I slept good because one none on my mind. I didn't go to bed with something on my mind because why? I made a conscious effort. Mm -mm, I'm going to make some silence silent. 
You want to get peace? Get still. Hello? Get in your word. Ha, 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 ha. Praise Father. You want to have tranquility? The Bible says be still and know that he is your God. He is God. How do I know? I got to be still and trust the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that he really has me. No matter the outside voices that, and see, mm, have you ever seen this commercial? I know I'm going to let you go. I know I said it. Have y'all seen this commercial where the, something's trying to come and attack that person, but the, supposedly the medicine is uh, keeping them from being attacked? You are, the Bible says, the Lord is a shield for me. He's a lifter of my head. God is a shield for you. He's a shield for you. So anything that's trying to come against you is going to bounce off that shield, baby, because God is your shield. He's my shield and my buckler. He protects me. Come on. So why I'm tripping? Why? Thank you. Why am I tripping? He's my protector. He's my shield. Why am I, why are you so fearful? That's what Jesus told us. Why are y'all so scary? I'm right here with you. And see, that's sometimes that's what we find us. Father God is right there with us and we acting petrified. Oh God. Oh, I'm here. I'm right here. I'm going to let you go. No fear. I pray that you go back and listen to this prophetic word again. Because I want you to know that Abba is working on your behalf. But we've got to be obedient to what he tells us to do. If you're praying, Lord, what's my hindrance? What's blocking? What's this? What's this? Check yourself. Father, I repent. I, I have not been walking fully in what you told me to do. I have not been aligning myself the way you told me to align. Just repent. Don't be so prideful. Ain't nothing wrong with me. A person full of pride will never see themselves, okay? They will point to you, somebody beside you, the person in their house, everybody else, but they will not point to themselves because they don't want to let go of pride because they feel if I let this go, that's saying there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with you. You're full of pride. Hello? But when you are honest enough to say, dude, child, you know I was jacked up from the floor, honey. I was a trip and a half. I had some issues. I had some ownership issues. I had this. If you if you can speak that and put it in the I had the past tense, I'm delivered now, girl. I don't deny what I used to do. Yeah, child, that used to be me, but God, you know, thank God for deliverance, honey. Ooh, thank, um, ooh, I, when I trip, child, but thank God for deliverance, I'm not the same. Why? Because I took ownership of me. We asking God, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Father saying, take ownership. Take on, own it. He told me, Jackie, I can't change you. I can't change you until you own you. That's what God told me. I made a t-shirt out of it. He can't, own, he can't change you until you own you. Because that's what he told me. I had to take ownership of me. I had to stop blaming anybody else. My mama, my daddy, my, my whomever. I had to stop blaming everybody and start looking at myself and saying, Girl, look at you. Look, girl, look at you. Look at you. Stop saying what you didn't do when you know you did it. I didn't do it. If I did do it, see, then that's, 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 that's pride. Pride step in and say, well, if I did do it, I had my reasons. No, you didn't. You just didn't want to own you. Hello. 
I got to own me in order for him to change me. See, we can't cry out, change me, Jesus, change me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, show me, me, show me. And he shows you, you, and you say, that ain't me. Ownership. I'm still talking about the adversary. I'm talking about how the enemy blocks you. I'm talking about how you block you. The enemy sometimes, he be sitting there like, I ain't doing none of that. But you blocking you by your tongue. You blocking you by not speaking the word. You blocking you. Sometimes it is the influencer. But sometimes it's you and the influencer working together. Hello, just an FYI. And sometimes it's just you, baby. Amen. Sending you some hugs and some love. Because Father's about to do something. Now, King, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank, thank you for your joy. Thank you for loving us enough, Father, to tell us Give us a heads up. Let us know what we need to do. How we need to stop listening to the influence of the, the adversary. And recognizing that you've already destroyed him. You've already, Jesus, spoiled principalities and powers. You've already done it. You've already finished it. All we have to do is walk out what you've finished. We have to keep looking at you, King, and using the word that you've given us. And use our tongue to speak life into our situations and not death. Help us not to be double-minded and unstable in our thinking. Help us, King, to empty our hearts, to be real. Help us to take ownership. Father, forgive us, those, Father, who say, I, I haven't been paying my tithes. I haven't been doing the things I'm supposed to do. I've been holding back on you. Forgive, Father. And we repent of that because we want to be everything that you want us to be. Father, forgive us if we've been seeking the things of the world and you've already ordained the blessings for us. Forgive us for not letting up, making our souls fat, Father. Hallelujah. Forgive us for not eating your word on a daily. Oh, King, because we want to be like you. We want to be like you. We want to say, Jesus, yes, we love you. And Jesus, yes, we will keep your commandments. We want to say, Father, we hear you. We will obey. We will not yield to the will of the adversary. We will look to you because you are the author and finisher of our faith. We can say it's already done like you said. We can speak your word boldly, knowing that we have you backing us up. Hmm. We won't fall. We won't sink. When the enemy is trying to bring something our way, we will hold to your word, King. We will hold to your word. Thank you, Lord. Now I heard that, King. I just heard my father say, Daughter, I want to put more in your hand. Father God wants to put more in your hands, you guys. He said, I want to put more in your hands. By you being obedient to the king, in every area, you're going to see him put more in your hands. Hallelujah. Why? Because when you're willing to relinquish what belongs to him, he can't help but put more in your hands. He can't help but put more in your hands. He can't help. Mm. Showers of blessings can't help but come to you. I want to put more in your hands. He will do it. 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 You got to trust him. You got to move unconditionally. Uh-uh. Don't. Mm, Jesus. Now, look at Jesus talking to me. Mm -mm. You got to not be hinged up to those things and yoked up to those things. Hallelujah. I have a, these hinges hold my door. But if the hinges are removed, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. The door is going to fall. It's not going to stay up. Your willingness to disconnect yourself 
from the things that the adversary is trying to do in your life and from you, then you can fall into what Abba has for you. You can fall into the blessings. You can fall, but if you all tight and t stuck and tight and won't loose yourself, you've got to disconnect yourself so that you can fall into what he has for you. Stop holding back on Heavenly Father. My father speaking to me, y'all. He said, daughter, I want to give more. I want to get more to them. 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 He wants to get more to you. But you got to trust him. Oh, my God. Oh, Father, we thank you and we love you and we honor you, King. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, Lord, open up your hearts and just receive. Just receive, just receive. Let me tell you something. I got to make a side note here. You are, since Father's addressing tithes in this, in this prophetic word, it's about your obedience. It's about your be uh, obedience. Yes, you're helping to fund the aid the kingdom of God here on earth by sowing. But God is saying, I want to help you. I want to see your obedience. Because if you're obedient in this, you will be obedient in other areas. It won't be hard. Oh my God. For some people, if they get disconnected from, if they can let their finances, that 10% go to king. If they can be obedient in that, some people, Father said, you'll be able to be free from other things. Mm. What has you? What's holding you? Oh, what? Mm. Trust. Will. Why? Because I got to trust him to give it to him. I got to trust him to release it. I got to trust him without stipulations attached to it. Okay, God, all right, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this. Now, now what you going to do for me? He's already what, told you what he's going to do for you. I rebuke the devourer for your sake. You may have been a moment where you, the cupboard, you go in there looking in the refrigerator, okay, I just got milk and got some bread and got some eggs, okay. Uh, I'm running low on meat or whatever, but my cupboard is not bare. I rebuke the devourer for your sake. I still got enough. He's going to make it more than enough. I still got it. I st I'm still eating. I'm, I'm, I might not be eating meat like I like to eat meat. I might be eating some beans right now, but that's all right. Thank you, Father, I can cook beans. He's still working for me. He's still working for me. Oh, I might be catching the bus right now, but that's okay. I'm going to keep riding the bus because I'm believing. I'm believing. I'm giving him his 10, so he's going to rebuke the devourer for my sake. In time, timing, 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 I'm going to get me the, the mobile that I'm desiring. I'm going to get what he promised me, a vehicle that he said he was going to give me. I'm going to do that. I got to keep walking. I got to keep trusting. I got to keep leaning. I have to keep depending on him because he's showing me. Keep stepping, girl. Keep walking. Keep trusting. Keep depending, man. I will not fail thee. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. And he's going to explode in your life like you've never seen before. I'm not just talking. He's going to explode in your life. There are some things that Father's just waiting on your consistency. He's waiting on you to be consistent in these various areas. And when you be consistent with him, If you do this, I'm going to do that. There are things in the word of God that are conditional. And there are things in the word of God that are not conditional. Hello, but this is a, if you be willing, is a condition. Hello. I love y'all. I'm going to let you go. I'm sending you hugs again. I'm going to be encouraged people. It's going to be okay. Now, join me Friday.
because I'm praying prophetic is coming. Join me Friday. It's going to be great, great and great because I'm feeling Jesus. Hallelujah. It's going to be great. Tell somebody about this prophetic word and tell them to subscribe to JLP Ministry TV so that they can get more and more of the word of God. Amen. Tell them, hallelujah, become a covenant partner with the ministry. If you haven't thought about it, prayed about it, think about it and pray about it. Become a covenant partner with JLP Ministries. There's Cash App, dollar sign JLP Ministry. There's Zelle and PayPal, JLP Ministry at att.net. Many ways to sow a seed. Pray about it. Ask Father, is this, the, is this the ministry that you want me to partner with, King? He'll give you an answer. Amen. Thank you for those of you who are saying, Prophets, I'm going to help you go to India. And you've been planting seed. Thank you, guys. I love y'all. It's working. Father is helping. I, I, I'm making plans. I'm, I'm getting stuff together. Hallelujah. I don't have but a, a short time. So thank you for seeding into the ministry to help me to go. Amen. Thank y'all. I really love you. And I'm not just saying it just to say it. If I could see y'all, I'd give y'all a whole lot of hugs. Hallelujah. So why not just send you one right now? Hugs, okay? Hallelujah. And you guys, don't forget Minister Angela Johnson's book, The Authentic Woman. Get this book. Hallelujah. You'll be glad you did. It's going to bless you. JLPministry.org to find out how, okay? So I love y'all. Remember, join me at a place of worship church. Oh my God. We have a great time. Hey, do me a favor. Be my guest this Sunday. I'm going to be speaking. So join me. Somebody say, oh, I got to come here. Come join me and be my guest. I will be speaking this Sunday. So 1045 at a place of worship church. 1704 Northampton Road, Suite 208 in DeSoto, Texas. I love you. Mark your calendars for Friday and join me. Don't miss it, okay? Love you guys. See you Friday. Thank you for sharing this word. Bye-bye.